time immemorial, people have been trying to live forever. Death has been the main preoccupation for all living beings and has been the primary driving force that has produced our culture. Culture which is founded on ritual, which is the practice of sacrifice, which encompasses the domain of religion. The desire for an afterlife has been an obsession because we cannot live forever. What happens to our culture if we remove death? What happens to religion if we can remove the idea of death and simply download our brains onto some kind of server? At the moment, these are theoretical questions that seem to belong in the domain of science fiction rather than theology. But in reality, many organizations are actively working on how artificial intelligence can enter the medical field and help prolong human life. I would like to get to a point where the distinction between technology and the human component is more and more blurred, so that it is difficult to perceive what part let's say, is the biological part and what is the artificial part. Because that would mean that we have conducted our work well in these years to come. That is, to make more and more artificial devices compatible with the human person. The desire to have the robotic and the biological in symbiosis brings about the concept of the cyborg, something that had been first prophesied in science fiction novels 50 years ago. This is a new horizon that may at first glance seem strange, but may enhance human capabilities and allow people who have previously not been able to actively participate in society have the chance to once more fully engage with their fellow citizens. The frontier we are trying to explore is to no longer exploit specific muscles, but to go and directly take the nerve signal from the patient's peripheral nervous system and read that signal to interpret the motor command. So, the person wearing the prosthesis naturally controls the prosthesis. Because we are able to extract the motion and tension from the signal. We do that through artificial intelligent techniques. So, in the most general definition possible, artificial intelligence is basically an algorithm and, in our case, it is used for prosthetic control. So, behind this concept, that is basically a machine that is capable of doing calculations. But this machine not only does calculations, but it is actually a robot capable of exerting forces, mechanical actions on the environment. When this occurs, it becomes extremely important to control how these actions are conducted. As the temptation of easily accessible problem-solving artificial intelligence becomes more and more readily available, and as more use cases pop up, it will be increasingly tempting to offload our responsibilities and challenging decisions to these AI entities. <music> professor Marta Bertolazzo, professor at the Campus Biomedico University of Rome, makes the case of how her Catholic faith informs how she sees AI. I will respond as a woman as a professor and as a citizen of the world. I believe that the richness of the Christian tradition, the theology even of the incarnation, just at a time when we are in danger of moving toward a very abstract conception of man because of the whole digital world, brings us back to what is a fundamental truth that also allows us to explore the possibilities of human intelligence. The question of intelligence is not a question, in my opinion, which divides man from the world, from creation, 
But it is exactly what brings us together, to remind us that man does not suffice himself. Does not found himself, and therefore that man's understanding of himself and the possibilities that come from his technological work, from his scientific work, also have their foundation. Precisely in openness, transcendence, precisely in man's ability to remain open in dialogue, in relationship with God, and not just question technology with fear of risks, but with an interest, with an orientation of man's best energy to implementation for a common good, for a good that builds a better world. Per un bene comune, per un bene che costruisca un mondo migliore. As was stated at the Vatican Symposium, the challenge of artificial intelligence for human society and the idea of the human person, machines are good at doing, not at being. Even if they're not able to have subjective experiences, though, the boundary between carbon-evolved and silicon-designed life will become increasingly porous. Come what may, we follow the Holy Father in praying that AI will always serve mankind in health, and care.